Hey, Edgar community, really excited to be back with another community spotlight. Today, we're joined by Michael from a software company called Zephyr, and we're excited to hear his take on how he uses social media automation to get the word out about his SaaS company. So I'm going to pass it on over to Michael to introduce himself a little bit, and we'll get into some more questions after that. Sure. Hi, Megan. Thanks for inviting me on. I appreciate it. Yeah, so uh, Zephyr is a software company. We're a content management system and we target marketing agencies specifically. We don't target kind of the general public. We work with marketing agencies to provide them a cloud-based uh, website content management platform to build websites for their clients. So we work only in the agency channel, uh, but we think Zephyr is uh, pretty fresh and modern and has a lot of great tools for agencies to kind of spin up a, a website design department or team or component within their agency uh, really quickly. Awesome. So having a presence on social media is obviously really important for every company and every brand these days to build that brand awareness and to have real relationships with your customers and your leads. So when you guys were thinking about your presence on social media, what attracted you to finding a social media automation tool to help with this? Yeah, so I really like the way Meet Edgar works because it's most tools that kind of make you schedule things in advance and then schedule again. You always have to kind of go back and and schedule things over and over and kind of keep filling the coffers, so to speak. Um, and there's some merit to that. And I like the meeting editor also gives you that option too. But to me, social media is really a mixture. Um, the best social media approach to me is um, to take the best of both worlds. I'm not really a big fan of just always having to feed the, the coffers over and over and over because that gets exhausting and it's inefficient in my opinion. Um, I also don't like just like raw automation where it's just like spitting the same stuff over and over because that just gets kind of stale. So I like the way Meet Edgar gives you an um, option to have both. So Meet Edgar is kind of the core um, foundation of content that is evergreen. And then we have the option also of posting things organically ad hoc that are more timely or that are more um, things you sprinkle in specifically at a certain time or based on certain events. So when you mix the two together, I think that really brings it to life. And so Meet Edgar seems to work really well for, for that plan, I think. Awesome. Yeah. So if you guys don't know what he's talking about, this evergreen posting schedule that we really love here at Meet Edgar allows you to make sure your status updates aren't just sent out once and then lost in the black hole of the internet. Rather, you can make sure that you're crafting a really strong message that is going to resonate with people no matter what segment of your audience are, that they're in um, and make sure that it's resurfaced so that you're writing your status update once but promoting it multiple times. And you set the schedule of when and how you want those posts to go out versus your more one-off posts that might be like holiday or day specific related and Edgar's got the features for you to do both of those there. Um, so on your team and on your marketing team, I'd love for you to give some advice for how you guys actually think about the content that you want to get out there and how you set up your categories and meet Edgar. Um, and just again, how you like to communicate with your followers and what type of content you're finding is working best these days. Sure. Yeah. So again, we're a software company, so it's maybe kind of specific to software companies, but maybe applicable to others. So category wise, um, I'm not looking at my account right now, but I'm pretty sure we have categories like, uh, you know, company promotion stuff, uh, partner promotion, uh, general educational content and some other stuff. So we kind of categorize by what type of content it is. And a lot of what we do is promoting our partners. So what I've seen work really well is to us, partner equals customer. So a customer to us, we call an agency partner. Um, there are customer who basically purchases the licenses from us and then turns around and uses that to build websites for their clients. Mm -hmm. So a partner, um, we really have to highlight our partners um, because if they're successful, we're successful. And so I think that translates to a lot of different industries where if you can use social media to highlight the great things your customers and clients and partners are doing, um, that takes the self-promotion element out of it. You're not always kind of like, oh, self-promoting all the time. And that kind of turns people off. But instead, you're, you're redirecting and promoting your customers, clients, or partners. And that does a couple of things. One is it shows that you care about your community, not just yourself. And you're kind of deflecting the promotion to others, which is more authentic and more real, I think. And also, when you are telling great success stories um, of people in your network, again, your customers, that helps them, which, of course, helps you. And it also adds some reciprocity as well. So, you know, we found that our partners like being promoted and like uh, showing off their work. And they turn around and, you know, like our stuff and share our stuff and tell people about us as well. So I think our strategy is really built a lot foundationally on highlighting what our partners are doing. 
I think that's so smart using that law of reciprocity that if you do something for someone, our brains are wired to want to repay the favor and to mm. want to have that community yeah. aspect that social media is so good for building upon. Um, so really take that to heart in this idea that you don't want your social media feeds to just be broadcasting yourself all the time because that's not a fun place for your community to learn about being a community together. So what can you do to promote others around you to really have this idea of collaboration over competition? Um, and that's the kind of vibe that really works well on social media. So I think that's really great. Um, so when it comes to scheduling your content, can you talk a little bit about how you guys experiment with what times of day are working best for sending out content to your um, followers and how you've set up your schedule over the few years? Mm -hmm. So it's not super scientific. I kind of just let Edgar do the defaults. <laughs> um, I think it's going to vary by audience. I think I think it is important to kind of know your audience. So for us, we're kind of business hours, you know, US based primarily, pretty, you know, vanilla daytime hours. Um, but also we work with a lot of agency owners who are, uh, you know, newer entrepreneurs who are kind of, you know, hustling all hours of the day. And so Sunday evenings um, also are good for us because a lot of business owners kind of prep the, the night before for kind of the week starting ahead. And so Sunday evenings are good times for business owners for us. Um, and we're in the marketing space, which is kind of just always on. So, you know, we do have some, you know, content that goes out in the evenings as well or different hours depending, but yeah, I think just knowing your audience is good. Um, different audiences are going to respond differently based on the product or industry you're in. But a lot of times I, I say, don't overthink it. I'm a big fan of not overthinking. I think we can go down this rabbit hole of, Oh, let's find the optimal time. Is it three seventeen PM or is it four Oh two PM? Like, you know, who cares? Just, it's more important to have the content and I don't like to overthink it too much. I really love that because when we start overthinking so often that's going to put us in this paralysis that we end up not doing anything at all when exactly. truly our followers just want that consistency of us showing up and your content as Michael was saying if it's valuable and if you've done the research on who your audience persona is and this content is going to match to what they're trying to learn in life that is what's going to be your biggest algorithm buster for making sure that it shows up in their feed because they've given the signals that that's the type of content they want. So I think that's a beautiful way of looking at it, of just making sure you're getting really valuable content out there. Um, so I would love for you to also talk through some of the features that your team really like to use in order to automate social media. Um, so kind of talking about RSS feeds or how you curate content and making sure that it's not kind of controlling your life, but rather you are in control of the content you're sending out. Yeah, yeah. So we do subscribe to a couple RSS feeds from our partners specifically. They have blog posts and their RSS feed, uh, RSS feed kicks into our account. And so we can just basically go through and say approve or decline, approve or decline, depending on if it's appropriate for our audience as well. And that's a really nice way to automate. So I think it applies to anyone who can find industry material. So if you are in an industry where you have, you know, media sites or publications, they're typically going to have some kind of RSS feed. You can uh, plug in to meet Edgar and then you've got your dashboard. I've got a reminder set every month that it just pops up and says, hey, go update Meet Edgar's library. And so I go in there and I see whatever's in the queue and I say approve, decline, approve, approve, and just kind of pull in new content from partners. So that really helps automate the process. Um, I think so much of the time, I mean, stuff like that is really helpful because so much of the time we get stuck on social media sounds like it's so time consuming and so mm -hmm. cumbersome, especially really busy people, you know, executives or business owners. I mean, we're just so overwhelmed. And if someone's telling us, hey, you should update social media every day, it's just like, Ugh, one more thing. So I really love kind of life hacking productivity things that help you uh, be as efficient as possible. So anyone can have a reminder set up where once a month you go in, look at your RSS feeds and approve new content and kind of set it up. You know, that's easy to do. Um, so anything that kind of shaves time off of the, the time you spend updating and kind of managing social media is helpful because I think that's better than doing nothing at all. So I like that feature. I also like the, uh, the link shortener. Um, Edgar has a nice link shortener automatically where you know, you've got a big long URL. If you're linking to it, it'll compress it down to a nice little uh, short link. That makes it look nice. Uh, I like the way you can uh, customize content for different networks. So Twitter versus Facebook versus LinkedIn. You can customize that. Um, and the statistics as well. You get weekly stats uh, as well. So it's kind of a nice all-in-one package. So kind of why we chose it. Meet Edgar has some cool features.
kind of all that's that. so awesome yeah this idea of making sure that you're batching your content even if it's batching going in and approving rss feeds and stuff like that is the biggest time saver when i adopted that strategy into my workflows as well um so I truly you guys take that to heart if you are not someone who's identifying tasks that you can do on a weekly or monthly basis all at once to save you time and to make sure you're not task switching and losing all of that time um, by onboarding and offboarding yourself to different tasks, take that advice to heart because it truly is a game changer. Um, cool. So you've been a wealth of knowledge about how this can really help uplevel your social media marketing. And I would love for you to leave the community with one more tip about what it has to do with marketing or if it has to do with social media automation that they can take into their lives and put into action today. Sure. I wouldn't say this is like an action, but it's more of a way to think about it that might help some people kind of move the needle a little bit. So a lot of people think if I'm doing social media, I have to see some results from it. Now, that sounds weird to say because, of course, we want results. Why wouldn't we? <laughs> so, yes, there are lots of ways to get results. I use social media advertising quite a bit. You know, paid advertising on Facebook is working really well for us. Um, and that leads to more organic reach as well because people kind of, you know, they like it and, you know, they like the page and that gets them to see more. So all that stuff works really well. But what I usually tell people is if you can't think of like if you're basically stuck in this place where you feel like you just aren't going to get leads or sales from social media, there is still a reason to do it. And that reason is to show that you have brand activity. So if you are um, whatever business X, Y, Z, whatever business you are, and someone goes to your website and most websites are going to have links to social media on there, or they're going to be able to find you on, on social media somewhere. And if they find you and your Facebook page hasn't been updated for a month, then your business looks stagnant. So even if you have no intention or are not good at getting leads or whatever, I think it's really important to show activity and at least a few times a week have some sort of activity. So when someone does a sniff check on your brand, they're looking at not just your website, but your Facebook, your LinkedIn, your Twitter, they're looking at these other properties. And if they see activity there and they see that your brand is visible and active, then that reassures them and gives them social proof that there is something happening with your brand. And that can go a long way toward building a little more trust and, and removing the objection of, oh, there's nothing happening there. So I think it's important for your brand, if nothing else, just to have that consistency. Oh my gosh, I love that so much. And this term sniff check about your brand, I don't know how I've never heard that before, but it makes so much sense. Um, yeah, checking you out, right? Yeah, for sure. It's exactly what they're doing. Um, so I think that is amazing way to end this. You guys make sure you're staying consistent. That's all people want to see is that you're a brand who's going to show up for your followers. And after someone has subscribed to your software service or purchased your product, they want to know you're going to be there for them and reachable and that you are an active brand on social media for that great social proof. So I think that is really wise. Um, well, thank you so much for sharing today, Michael. And everyone, if you've taken a tip from this video, go ahead and give it a like and let us know in the comments below what you're going to put into action today. And we'll see you next time. Thanks, Michael. Thanks, Megan.